Hello, and welcome to the podcast. It's really a thrill for me to do these 10 podcasts on love. I feel like I really am expressing my heart and what I think is important for you, the listening audience. And if I'm to impact you in any way, in any way, I, I would love to impact you your love walk. So, I want to continue. We're, we're in the fifth uh, show here, and we're going to look at the scripture from James's epistle. And in verse 15, he says, um, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says unto him, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things that they need, uh, he said, what, what does that profit? Even so, faith without works is dead. So, the only way to have a living faith is to have a love walk because you're doing this for Jesus. You're not doing it even for the person, although that's, you know, he says the poor you will always have with you. You know, let her put the ointment on my feet because I'm only here for a while, but you can do this now to the poor. In my absence, they're me. And so you wash their feet, you anoint them, you feed them, you care for them. And there is a great love uh, shown when we do these things. Now, there are, there's actually something that happens inside of us. I'm reading this book, it's called Holy Moments, and they say that when you do good, you actually get like a flush of, you know, dopamine release in you, and you feel almost like a high. Or a, and if you've ever done good and know what I'm talking about, you, you you know there's some kind of physiological reaction to this love walk, you know, that when we do see someone in need and we reach out and care for them, it releases endorphins in us, and it is a wonderful feeling, and you can have that replicated. The more good you do, the better you'll feel. And I want to talk to you today about a movie. Uh, many, many have seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And it's a Christmas movie, but it really is a powerful, powerful example of the person, George Bailey, who laid down his life for his townspeople. Oh, he struggled with it. He wanted to get away from them, and uh, you know, but yet he didn't. And that is what I want to say to you is that follow those impulses because you will have a wonderful life and you'll have many friends. But what I want to go is a little bit deeper about this movie. Uh, I, I was happened to stumble upon this and I felt like God wanted me to share this with you. But it really actually has its roots in a true story. And uh, from Seneca Falls, they believe Frank Capra, New York, that he was in the town and he was reading this short story but also thinking of the movie and he found this town, and he went to the bridge, and it's actually the bridge that they use in the movie, and there are certain scenes that it you know, looks like Seneca Falls. He never wanted to acknowledge that, but they acknowledge it. They have a It's a Wonderful Life Museum there. But there's a plaque on the bridge, and it's a, a man called uh, Antonio Barcelli. He an, was an Italian immigrant around the turn of the century, maybe around 1905 or a little later, that this woman had jumped off the bridge to kill herself, that he jumped in, and in the movie Clarence the Angel does it, but he is like a human angel, jumps in to save her life, and he successfully saves her life. But in his story, he is so fatigued that he dies. And this is what love is. When you, you know, lay down your life, we ought also to lay our lives down too. And the beautiful thing that happened is they have this plaque about Antonio Vercelli on the bridge and that the people in town were so moved by his selfless act of compassion. He was in America saving up money to bring his family from Italy to uh America and the, the town, like in the movie when they save George Bailey and they get all the money and pay the bill, these people raised enough money to bring his family from Italy, got them jobs. And I think Frank Capra, who is Italian, by the way, was very much overwhelmed by this act of love and incorporated it in, in the short story, and uh, which then became the movie. And I am so moved by that. Every time I see that movie, and I, you know, it reminds me, I, I have a wonderful life. I've had the privilege of helping many, many people. And 
many people, I even forgot I helped. You know, they'll come to me and say, oh, I love the way you took care of my mother. I say, I don't remember your mother. But someday God will remind me who their mother was. And I want to impart this to you. I don't want you to have a dead faith. We, you're all talk and no action. We must love in deed and truth. He says, faith without works is dead. You're, you're you know, walking dead man. No. We must be the people of love. We must be the ones who are the Antonio Vercellis. And I know it's scary because he lost his life in that act of love. But, but maybe he got so many, so much return from God. Who knows what his eternity is like? But he was so moved with compassion. They said he couldn't even really swim. And yet he jumps in to save this woman who tried to commit suicide. And I know when I watch the movie and, you know, and they talk about George thinking his life is a waste. You know, what life have I had? I, this brother did this, this one did that, and here I am stuck in this town. And sometimes God says, stay put and love those who are right in front of you. You want to go off and do this and that, and he's calling you to love your family, and you love your children, and love your grandchildren, and love your neighbor, and love your fellow churchmate, love your office mate, love those who are around you, love your husbands, husbands love your wife. I mean, this is what it's all about, folks. You want to be a Christian? A Christian is a living love relationship with everyone. And we are confronted sometimes with monumental circumstances to show love and sometimes just little bitty ones. But maybe that movie is so popular because it's based on this true story. Story. And I really actually want to go to Seneca Falls and go to the museum and even learn more about it. And the people are very proud and they feel their main street is, you know, Bedford Falls, but this is Seneca Falls. But the greater thing that I'm trying to say to you is that we can really find encouragement by someone else's act of love. And you don't know who's watching you when you show love to the least, and maybe they want to imitate you and say, I want to be like that. And that's the greatest compliment. Imitation is the greatest compliment. Father, in the name of Jesus, impart this desire for us to set holy examples of love to those in our life, in Jesus' name. Oh, I love you. Let me know you got something out of this, Frank Julian 5 at Gmail. Help spread the word, let's grow the listening audience. And thank you so much for listening. God bless you. I love you. Bye till next week. On behalf of Frank Julian Ministries, we want to say thank you so much for listening. We upload podcasts every Thursday on Roku, YouTube, and audio podcasts. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. If you need prayers or seeking a prayer community, we're here for you. Come join us on our Facebook page, Love, Prayers, and Healing Podcast with Pastor Frank. See you next week.